Shalom and welcome to today's study on Is the Church the Bride of Christ? Let us pray. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, ancient of days, we thank you for giving us the grace to come and learn at your feet. Daddy, please remove everything you've not planted in our hearts and please sanctify our hearts and minds with your word and with the blood of Jesus Christ. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. There are some questions I would like us to ask ourselves during this study. The first question is, why did Jesus say we, we will be like angels who neither marry nor are given to marriage? Right? The second question, why did Jesus never call us his bride, but rather his body? Next question is, why is it that we are always referred to as the invited guest and not the bride? Further, why is John the Baptist the friend of the groom and also not the bride? Right? An interesting question is, the participants of the supper are the lamp, the bride, the friend of the bride, which is John the Baptist, and the guest. Who are these guests? The last question. Is the mystery in Ephesians 5, 22 to 33 about the body of Christ or the bride of Christ? Let's have all this in mind. The Lamb's Wife. While lamb's wife is mentioned in Revelations, the term bride of Christ is never used in the Bible. Yes, bride of Christ is never used in the Bible. I know this is foreign to most Christians. It's going to shock some Christians, right? And it will be the first time they are hearing of this. As we all know, tradition isn't always correct and scriptural. With this in mind, I want the listener to look at scriptures with the help of the Holy Spirit and put aside any presumptions and traditions that have been taught for many years. I was one of those Christians who used to believe that the Bride of Christ is the Church. The problem I found is that the Bible does not say the church is the bride of Christ. We mostly use Ephesians 5, 22 to 33 and 2 Corinthians 11, 2 to make these assumptions. Please take note, neither of those passages states the church is the bride. We are going to treat that no worries. As a matter of fact, the lamb's wife is only mentioned in Revelations 21. Let's read Revelations 21, 7 to 10. No, 9 to 10, sorry. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. Notice how the angel did not show him a people, the church, a group within the church, Israel or the great multitude. But rather, the angel showed him a literal city, right? If the church was the bride, wouldn't the angel showed him a people and then go on to describe the people of God, the bride? But the angel showed him the bride, which is the new Jerusalem, 
and then goes on to describe this bride in the following passages. That is still Revelations 21, 24 to 27. It reads, And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor unto it, into it, and the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day. For there shall be no night there, and they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it, and there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie. But they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. In verse 27, if the Christian church is the same as New Jerusalem, then who are these people whose names are written in this Lamb's book of life? The only ones who will have access to this holy city. Here it should be clear, the New Jerusalem and the church, which are the, those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life, are not the same. So I think this point should be clear. The Lamb will be, the Lamb, which is Jesus Christ, will be the light of New Jerusalem, and not the sun and moon. Remember, as of now on earth, the sun and the moon gives us light. In New Jerusalem, the church, which we are the church, we walk in the light of Jesus Christ in New Jerusalem. Also take note, it says the gate of New Jerusalem shall not be shut at all, and only the saints shall enter into the gate. Right? If it is not still clear, no worries, ride on. Let's expand more on this by reading Revelations 22, 14 to 17. It says, Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and warmongers and murderers and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, and the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bright say, again, and the spirits and the bride say, Come, and let him that heareth say, Come, and let him that is thirst, that is a thirst, come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. Then let's read Revelations 2 7. Yeah, we go back to Revelations 2 7. It says, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. To him that overcometh, will I give to it of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. As you can see, the church which does his commandment may enter through the gates of new Jerusalem. Notice again, the church is not new Jerusalem, but can enter into the city, new Jerusalem. When addressing the church at Ephesus in Revelations 2, 7, our Lord Jesus said, to him that overcometh, meaning the church, the saints, he will give the tree of life, which is in the midst of 
the paradise of God. Apostle Paul takes this a step further. He says, The Jerusalem above is free, and she is a mother. This is found in Galatians 4, 25-26. Let me read. For this, Aga is Mount Sinai in Arabia, and answered to Jerusalem, which now is, and is in bondage with her children. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. Right? So, this is to, Apostle Paul was trying to explain that the Jerusalem, which is now on earth, is in bondage. And she is in bondage with her children. So the Jerusalem on earth is a mother already, having children. But the Jerusalem which is above is free. And we know the Jerusalem which is above is a new Jerusalem, right? And that is the lamp, the, the wife of the lamp. She is free and she is a mother, right? So there is no way the mother and the children, they are the same people. Mm -mm. Revelations 3.12 says, Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. And he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. Take note. And I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem. So the name of New Jerusalem which is the bride of Christ, will be written in the forehead of the overcomers, as well as the name of God and the name of Jesus Christ. Right? He didn't say he will write our names. No. He said, us the overcomers, he will write the name of God, the name of the new city, New Jerusalem, which is New Jerusalem, and his new name, he will write on our forehead. He will write on our forehead. So this clearly shows that we are not the church, is not the bride of Christ, right? New Jerusalem is adorned with the righteousness of the saints. Let's read Revelation 19, 5 to 9. And a voice came out of the throne, saying, Praise our God, all his saints, and he that fear him, both small and great. And I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come and his bride had made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he said unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, These are the true sayings of God. There are two things I want us to take note, or three. We have the great multitudes. We also have the fact that the new Jerusalem is adorned with the righteousness of saints. And also the fact that it is said, 
Blessed are they which are called into the marriage supper of the Lamb. Blessed are they which are called into the marriage supper of the Lamb. Right? So, in verse 6, it says, It was granted to the bride that she should be clothed in fine linen, which is the righteousness of the saints. The point here is that God has adorned or clothed this city with saints. The saints and their righteousness will adorn the bride. Remember at the beginning in Revelation 21, 24 to 27, we saw that those whose name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life will bring their glory and honor into New Jerusalem. So, yes, we adorn the bride. As a matter of fact, this is not foreign to scriptures. Listen to what Isaiah 49, 14 to 18 says. But Zion said, The Lord had forsaken me, and my Lord had forsaken me. Can a woman forget her sucking, her sucking child that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yea, they may forget, yet will I not forget thee. Behold, I have graven thee upon the palms of my hands. Thy walls are continually before me. Thy children shall make haste. Thy destroyers and they that made thee shall waste, shall go forth of thee. Lift up thine eyes round about, and behold, all of these gather themselves together and come to thee. Listen, as I live, said the Lord, thou shalt surely clothe thee with them all, as with an ornament, and bind them on thee as a bright jewel. So you can see this is not a first time, right, that this is mentioned in the Bible. Here comes the third point. Remember in Revelation 19, it said, or Revelation 19, 9, it said, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. Who are these guests? Let's look at Matthew 22, 1 to 14 for the answer. It reads, And Jesus answered and spake unto them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king, which made a marriage for his son, and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding. And they would not come. Again, he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidding, Behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. But they made light of it and went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. And the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth, and he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burnt up their city. Then said he to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Go he therefore into the highways, and as many as he shall find, bid to the marriage. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came in to see the guests, 
he saw there was he saw there a man which had not on the wedding garment and he said unto him friend how camest thou in Hida, not having a wedding garment and he was speechless then said the king to the servant bind him hand and foot and take him away and cast him into outer darkness there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth for many are called but few are chosen first we should note that the bride and the groom cannot be invited to their wedding right i think that is clear the bride and the groom cannot be invited to their own wedding we also agree that the king is god and that the king's son is jesus himself right and the servants whom god sent these are prophets right who are being slewed and treated spitefully right and the original invited guests are the jews and the new guests are the gentiles so god the father is now preparing a wedding feast for his son and he has invited many to attend it from the passage we are the guests we are the guests we are the ones who are being called or invited to the wedding or to the supper also please take note in matthew 22 verse 30 it says we will be like angels who do not marry or are given to marriage then john the baptist did not consider himself to be the bride but rather the friend to the bride again in matthew 9 14 to 15 our lord jesus christ referred to his own disciples as children of the bride chamber at this stage we should really be asking ourselves why is it that jesus christ never i mean never referred to us or his disciples as his bride why children why body why guests but never the bride so i think this should be an assignment also for you to go back to scriptures and see if you can find that and when you do please do not forget to comment below here is one of the passages which is mostly used to refer the church as the bride of christ this is ephesians 5 22 to 33 i read wives submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the lord for the husband is the head of the wife even as christ is the head of the church and he is the savior of the body therefore as the church is subject unto christ so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything husbands love your wives even as christ also loved the church and gave himself for it that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word that he might present it to himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing but that it should be holy and without blemish so ought men to love their wives as their own bodies he that loveth his wife loveth himself for no man ever yet hated his own flesh but nourisheth and cherisheth it even as the lord the church for we are members of his body of his flesh and of his bones for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife and they too shall be one flesh this is a great mystery but i speak concerning christ and the church nevertheless let every one of you in particular 
so loved his wife, even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. So you can see this passage is all about a great mystery. Now, the, the question is, what is this great mystery? Is the great mystery the fact that Jesus Christ is, nay, that the church is the bride of Jesus Christ, or the fact that the church is the body of Jesus Christ? First thing that I would like to mention is the fact that none of these verses say that the church is the bride. None. He didn't say the church is the bride. But the verses show us that the church is the body of Christ. So throughout, the emphasis has been on the body of Christ. So the third thing I want to mention is that there is a mystery which is which can be found in verse 32 it says that this is a great mystery but i speak concerning christ and the church and what is this mystery the focal point right of this message the point to look at it starts from verse 29 which reads for no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourished and cherished it, even as the Lord the church. Remember the previous verses, the emphasis has been on the body. And it goes further. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. That is an emphasis. That, was, that is an emphasis of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones then it goes deeper for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife so apostle Paul took us back to Genesis the very beginning which we know that when a man and a wife they join they become one flesh Genesis 2 24 right he said, and they too shall be one flesh. Then it says, this is a great mystery. But I speak concerning Christ and the church. So the point of this message is Christ and the church. Christ being the head and the church being the body. That is the focal point. And it, Apostle Paul uses Christ being the church and the Christ being the head and the church being the body as one flesh right and compares it to the husband and wife which is also one flesh that is the mystery and he said but I speak concerning Christ and the church then listen he says nevertheless nevertheless which means that was not the focal point Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. Nevertheless, which means it is less. Nevertheless, that was not the focal point. Right? So we'll go further. The second passage mostly used to ref to refer the church as the bride of Christ is Second Corinthians eleven two to three. Doesn't it state that the church is espoused to Christ and that she will marry Christ one day? Let's look at it. It says, "For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband." that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. From the simplicity that is in Christ. Let's go scripture in context, right? 
the Corinthians were facing most many false prophets, yeah, who were trying to deceive the church from the simplicity of the gospel. Paul was afraid that they would be deceived. Hence the reason why he says in verse 3, But I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. This verse is simply an illustration as to how each church or as to how the church is to behave itself. All Paul is teaching is that the churches or the church of God need to behave and remain pure, right? They need to be pure, just like a wife is supposed to behave and remain pure for her husband. That is all. Paul is not teaching brighter relationship or the doctrine of bride. If we take 2 Corinthians 11 to literal, then that would mean that Paul would not be the bride since he is the one doing the espousing. Please take note, in the Hebrew tradition, it shouldn't be Paul who will be doing the espousing, right? It should be the father of the bridegroom, not Paul. He is not in that position, right? So, nevertheless, Paul is using a figure or an illustration to show that the church needs to remain pure, needs to focus on the truth, nothing but the truth. And the truth is so simple. The truth is always so simple, but the enemy will like to complicate it. And humans don't like simple things, right? Humans don't like simple things. Paul's focus was that the church needs to focus on the truth and not this deception of false prophets and teachers. Abraham looked for a city whose builder and maker is God, right? And which had foundations. This can be seen in Hebrews 11, 8 to 10. You can read. So at this point, we can see that the Bible is very clear on the identity of the bride. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls full of the seven last plagues came and spoke with me, saying, Come here, I will show you the bride, the wife of the lamp. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me the holy city new jerusalem coming down out of heaven from god praise god so this is the end of the of the study let's thank god for everything he has done abba father in the mighty name of jesus christ we thank you, Lord God, because you are the revealer of truth. For you are truth. You are holy, you are pure. Ancient of days, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have decided to follow truth, nothing but the truth, the simplicity of Christ Jesus. And you are truth. Please let your Holy Spirit lead and guide and direct us into all truth. Let your word be a lamp unto our feet, now and forevermore. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. And also, please, Lord God, I pray that all those who come here, Lord God, to listen to your word, to seek truth, please visit them, O oh Lord God, in your own special way. Let them not go back empty-handed. Let them be blessed. Take total control. Let your word sanctify their hearts now and forevermore and let the, your word which is light in their life let it so much shine so that darkness will not be able to comprehend it and light O oh lord god can never be hidden but it is placed on a hill so shall we be adonai now and forevermore for in jesus mighty name we pray with thanksgiving amen and amen shalom